I got, I got, I got nothing. I've got nothing but love for you. See, we did it. See, we did it. I saw you. I I gotta jump on this. I I I request to be accepted. You did. You did. You did great. You did great. Uh, Listen, listen. This is a chore that many people don't want to take. Is to come on live on Instagram. Get all my lights. Get get my lights. No, 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 no. You look. You look fantastic. You look fabulous. Fabulous. Are we live well, right now? Well, people are telling you how yes, we are live right now. This oh, is this okay. is not like just a moment ago when we were talking <laughs> privately. Uh, hey, so everybody y'all. if you yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah, we're we, they actually can hear us now. So so everybody we we normally talk privately with our guests before they come <laughs> on the show. Uh, we were doing that just a moment ago. This is again round 2. We've already did round 1 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, We are going to uh, take your questions. Many have been sent in to me, uh, and some were left over because we are able to capture the show and all the comments uh, here at Narc Abuse TV Network. And so we have questions from that. We have questions that were sent in. And then, of course, we have questions that came in today. And, of course, there will be some, no doubt, during the show. Um, You're getting tons of love across the screen. Yes, feel feel free to do that. I love it when I recognize the names. That's yeah. good. Well, Judith is saying hi to you. Um, hey, <laughs> your fan club is here as well. Yeah. Uh, others, I'm trying to make this bigger on the screen for my older eyes here. Uh, I do want to mention this. <laughs> mention this. I see Abby has just joined us as well. Uh, Abby, uh, one of your supporters and, and uh, followers, as well Romina. as uh, also following us here on Narc Abuse TV. I just want to mention this to everyone. Um, your first time here, please do us a huge favor. Uh, for Susan and I. Tell us where you're coming from. I don't care if you want to make up a place like Planet Mars, uh, NARC, NARC Free Mars or something like that. Just let us know where you're giving. Give a show. I can give you a shout out from wherever you are, as well as feel free to put your first name or a fake name. If you want to be Jane Doe today, that's fine. Uh, that way I don't have to repeat uh, your Instagram name. Right now, our main objective is to get to as much as we possibly can what we're going to do today, everybody, last time we did a show together uh, a few weeks ago, we went the longest I've ever done a show on Instagram, and I think they freaked out because uh, they allow me two hours. I've just never Good. used it, but we, okay. we almost went two hours. Okay. Uh, today, we're going to do an hour, take a break, and come right back, okay. uh, and then we're going to have everybody get ready with your questions for next Saturday. Oh, next Saturday day. is really the big day in which uh, we're going to hopefully talk to as many as possible until we uh, both pass out. So <laughs> that's, that's, okay. the, that's the plan, but we'll yeah. see what happens. Today, today right now, uh, hold on one second. Uh, today, right now, um, I am going to start with this one, uh, if you don't mind, Susan, because I'm going to get right to it. We're going to get All as right, many as we right can. All right, All right, here we go. Then here we go. I tried to measure out how many questions I had and which one was the most popular. Okay. Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> but this is one that was a common theme. All right. How do I know if it's infatuation or love? Oh, they're very similar. Um, infatuation is the beginning. It's where you still have, for those of you that follow me and you know what I mean when I say the dream, infatuation is the initial stage. It's where you don't know enough about them to have resentment yet, but it's it's kind of in between a crush and sexual attraction. And it's, it's this beautiful pink bubble time period. Love is less dramatic. I mean, love is kind of comparatively, uh, it is steady, it is calm. You find that you are willing to accept the pluses and the minuses of the human being. You see them for what they are. They disappoint you. They let you down. They have their humanity and their foibles. And, you know, you see moments that are unattractive and you still find a way to want to be with them. That's love, right? What do you say, Larry? I mean, Paxton, right? What I was going to tell you is um, you've explained it quite well. Because uh, I would just, I would have not have said that at all. I would just say once they give you money, then they're in love with you. Is that, that's the wrong answer? 
That's the, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I'm just joking. I, I I'm joking. I'm super chat to give me money, so I, I, I don't know about that. You, you know? know. Well, I got to tell you this. Uh, you're getting uh, New York. Okay, I'm just going to have to tell you. Andrea from New York City. Uh, let's see. That looks like Ida from sunny San Diego. Uh, we've got uh, Mystic, uh, which uh, we're going to say hello to Izzy, uh, who's here. Judith from the Netherlands. Uh, Pakistan is in the house. Wow. Uh, they uh, Body Paint from Barcelona says, love you, oh. Susan. They're from Barcelona. Uh, thank you. you. Thank you, Abby. Much love to you. She says hello to both of us. Uh, looks like uh, Romania is from Seattle. Oh. Uh, Amat from India. Uh, Mystic, okay. uh, by the way, which is Izzy. She's from Colorado. Uh, oh, wow. There's much more. Susan is the best. Uh, we love you, Susan. Oh, wait, this keeps going here. Uh, Susan is the best. Hello, Susan. It's Judith. Um, Hi, Judith. Uh, you're, of course, your fan club is here. And many more uh, that are saying hello from Canada. That's from Shan uh, Shanti. Uh, if I miss you, you know I love you, but we'll uh, we'll give you a shout-out uh, uh, again. Let me scroll here a little bit more before I give you the next one here. Uh, Powell River, British Columbia, wow. uh, Canada is where Shanti is from. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hello, for, uh, of course, from uh, my friend Deb, uh, beautiful Deb from Colo Life Coach. Deb, she says hello from Colorado. England is in the house. Uh, Life After Narcissist uh, there from England. And of course, Abby uh, is from Paris, France. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, you, you did it. My goodness. Um, it, it just keeps going here. Everybody, thank you. Lansing, Michigan in the house. Uh, Judith, of course, uh, sends her love to you uh, and others. You still got me? You got you got me in your ear there? We're good? I do. I do. Okay, all right. So here we go. That was on infatuation and love. Okay. Uh, when should we... Uh, this is coming from a young lady. Uh, when should we discuss money in the relationship? Oh, that's such a good... So um, I, I have a speaking tour that I do. It's called Love, Money, and Power. People okay. don't talk about this. They don't want to talk about it. One of the realities of having a relationship, being in a relationship with somebody, is that you will have discussions about finances, especially if you get serious as a couple, you start planning for your future, and you decide to cohabitate, or you want to get married. So Got it. on the first few dates... I would suggest you don't say, I'm a wealthy woman. I've got tons of money. And I would suggest you don't say things like, oh, my last boyfriend took me to Monaco and I'm used to getting Bentleys and I only, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming anybody who's on our channel together with your men, you know, somebody. Yeah, right, wants right, to right. Listen, they're not going to be those people. But right. if you have an estate and you have money, some of it's evident, the other part of it should be discreet okay. you know uh you talk money when you are a couple and you are determining how you are going to pay for things together right i think 50 50 i i like to have men court in the beginning and yeah. then as you're a couple it moves into 50 50 you may want to take your partner on a vacation they take you someplace it's got to work out like that and so I'd have to know more the specifics of money. I do not believe in giving your partner a credit card. I do not believe in excessive gifts. And I do not believe in trying to buy affection. And especially yeah. if there's an age discrepancy, it just sets you up to be in that trap forever. I don't think any of us, uh, there are a lot of women here that have a lot of money and they make good money. Yeah. And there are men that are kind of uncomfortable with how to handle that. You shouldn't be experiencing things like if you like to stay in a four or five star hotel, you're mm -hmm. not going to be comfortable in some roadside dive in a motel yeah. where you're scared. Motel, to motel, six, is, yeah. motel six is not going to make it, right? Yeah, yeah, like on a highway yeah. in the middle of nowhere where there are a bunch of truckers yeah. and noise and like rowdy yeah. people. You're not going to yeah. like that. But um, money is a reality and so is debt. There's a lot of things that look like money. So... I'd love to hear the second part to that, as in yeah. what is it relating to? I'll tell you the follow-up because I asked the follow-up to that oh, when I oh, got the brilliant. question. Okay. And the follow-up is is that uh, she had more money than the guy did. Of course. So, so because the way the question when I received it and thought about it was, well, okay, that's just a basic question. You know, hey, we yeah. both, you know, work and, 
but no, it's she she has ex- extensively much more than he does. So it's a really good question from that standpoint. Uh, that's a really good one there. Hello from uh, that looks like Sweden. Uh, that's Julia, and yeah. uh, we got Orangeburg, South Carolina, from Christopher Johnson, uh, also saying hello to you uh, in regards to the show. Now you got a question from one of your followers and subscribers that he posted and sent to me as well as uh, he reached out to you as well before the show. And uh, I captured that question, and I'm just going to put it in a nutshell. Overall, the first question, he had us the second one. I'll take a look at that uh, a little bit later. But the first question was, in a nutshell, he was trying to get an idea of what he should do because for him, he's interested in older women, women that are older than him. Uh, So he was looking for advice how to present himself in such a way so that he can have a long-term relationship with an older woman. Well, okay. go right ahead. Firstly, you have to work against her assumption that you're immature. So the more sophisticated, the more worldly you are, the more your breadth of knowledge, the more successful you are, or at least secure and grounded, that'll serve you mm-hmm. well. Um, you know, she's got to really like you as a person and uh, you need to be in a location where you would meet the kind of women. And I think I know who you're talking about. He, he, he's asked me numerous times to help him to know where to meet the kinds of women he wants. Well, I don't think you're going to find them in a club. You would find them in a quiet lounge. You would find them in an upscale hotel bar. You would find them in a networking organization because... Um, women of a certain age don't want to put up with any nonsense and you're not going to have them like drunk and throwing up, you know, at four in the morning. They're just not going to do that. <laughs> right. Dr- drunk, so, drunk and throwing up at four in the morning. Yes. There's a certain age group that I could do. It just immediately popped in my head uh, uh, that would find themselves city. sad to say in that situation. But yeah, especially if As they're not mature and discreet. I used uh, to correct. walk my dog when I was writing and when I'd be like on a writing role in the early 2000s and I'd take her out at all hours of the day and night. And sometimes I'd get, you know, and it would be three in the morning and I'd see these girls on the street, you know, in their high heels. And I'd be like, oh, yeah. you know, but um, mature women, I would I would really look to present yourself as a solid guy, not a plaything, because they're going to put you in that box and assume that one, you don't know how to have a relationship. And they're also going to assume that you're there for reasons other than love. You either want to check it off your list as some kind of fantasy, or you want money and opportunity. So you're going to have to do everything to work against that. Does this uh, prove to be the same when it comes to the roles being reversed? Absolutely. I mean, so so the breadth of knowledge the breadth of knowledge and uh, how did you say it? Uh, being Miami whirly as it were. Go ahead. My, Miami. Uh, so my friends from Miami tell me all you see are these young gals looking absolutely gorgeous, trying to capture older men with money who are retired and went down there to relax in the sun and half of New York has decided to stay there. So um, I hear these stories about this. And yeah. uh, I, I heard, I heard a colleague say recently, Hunt Etheridge t- said the other day, he said, every man will know the true test of love when he meets a woman and he's doing well. And then he loses everything and she's still with him as he builds yeah. it back up. But he's, and, he's absolutely correct. Yes, and, he and, and he's a, he's yeah. a cool guy. It's quest for advice. Yeah. If you want to check it out here and okay. I'm meeting him for um, lunch on Monday too. Cool. Uh, okay. But, but it's, you know, we worry that you're going to leave us if we don't look pretty. I think guys worry in the heterosexual world that we're going to leave you if you don't yeah. have any money. Yeah. So there's always that. That's true. On. That's true, by the way. That's a running theme for, for majority of men. That's correct. Women worry for the same reason. And if women didn't know that before, we got gigolos now. And maybe you didn't 60 years ago, except maybe in some of the European countries where it was more fashionable. But um, women who have money have to be careful of somebody love bombing them and coming after them for the wrong reasons too. So it takes That's, discernment. Yeah. You, you could see why that question that the young lady sent in, uh, once I asked her an additional question, a follow-up question, I could see where she was coming from because, yeah. you know, the, the guy is appealing, but she had to be realistic that she, she's extensively much more well off than him. And she wasn't sure where this is coming from. And she uh, gets to control it. 
Yeah. She can let I, him I, as close to her. She can keep her guard up, let him in, evaluate him. Listen, there are times that the best of us get fooled. It happens. Yeah. You know, some are going to lie to you and some are going to be straight with you. And that that just, actually... That actually is the next question. Oh, <laughs> so okay. It literally is that okay, the next yeah. question. But I got to I got to I, I got to say this to everyone that is watching that is here with us. I see three questions here for me uh, in front of me that I need to uh, get to Susan. I'm going to get to those in just a moment. Everyone, please fill in the question section here in the live chat here with Susan. Uh, this live group chat. Um, again, I remind everybody, tell us where you're coming in from. We'll give you a shout out for that. And uh, feel free to put your first name. Uh, that'll save us a lot of time instead of saying a long Instagram uh, IG name. Uh, I got to tell you that we're going to start a fight here real quick before we get to the question. <laughs> I'm looking at, oh, my goodness, uh, Arma, Arma, uh, 88K. I'm just going to call you 88K. Okay. I'm going to butcher your name there. It says, hello, dear Susan. Here we go, Susan. Here comes the fight. Your biggest fan from Vancouver, Canada. Oh, now, there's a few other people from Canada here. They may be fighting over you in a moment. So the biggest fan from Vancouver, Canada, is saying hello to you. And uh, let me see here. i got to get this in here. Uh, Susan, love you saying of we can't be seen looking through a dirty mirror. Oh, oh, uh, oh I know what they're talking about. Okay. Okay. That's Gary. That's Gary, by the way. That's Gary okay. Harris, uh, 19. He says, uh, I'm still holding up my cell phone light and cutting through the crowd. Always enjoy your advice. And he says thanks to you, by the way. So he's giving some love to you on that. Okay. And a number of other people have uh, commented there. We're going to get to that in a second, everybody. I got to give you this question because you were just touching on it just a moment ago. And the question is, how do I know if he or she is a player? Now, I combined a number of questions yeah, that yeah. were very... Right, right, so I right, just right. went he or she. It wasn't one person yeah. that said that. They, I had... I, I can't say which one outweighed the other, but it was a common concern. How does a person know if they're playing someone who is literally just playing with other people's hearts? In the beginning, you will feel that it's very rushed. It's, it's taken you by surprise. It's so much, so much overload, compliments, attention. It's too much too soon, but it's intoxicating. I mean, you know it you love it you want to go with it and so you want to absorb it <laughs> nobody falls yeah. in love that quickly nobody thinks you're that amazing in a day or two or a week or three so you have to be careful the number one sign is excessive it's excessive it feels too good to be true and most of the time i hate to say this but when it feels too good to be true it may just be the case i don't want to dissuade anybody who's in that 10 percent of oh my god i think it is real because it yes. can be that but you've got to be cautious anybody that's getting you to move too fast and urging you to fall in love and they've never felt like this before and oh my god i told all my friends about you let's see <laughs> if they can make it through the six month mark okay because normally this is six two months. months six, yeah. six yeah, month mark two, normally got it a month or two they're gone you know, so okay. let's see if they can I'll, make six months to a year and still feel the same way. Yes. So don't don't uh, be jumping at the first sale that, <laughs> that's there. Slow, you may, yeah. Yeah. Slow it down. Slow, slow it down. down a bit so that you're not losing your footing in the way. You know, it's yeah. it's that unbelievable light that they cast on you. That's a player. That's what they do. They make you feel amazing. When you feel the drugs yeah. going through your system the dopamine, yeah. the testosterone, yeah. all that stuff, oxytocin, you just know, mm, I'm on a drug high. I better back up and take a look at this. Okay. Ah, that's a good one. I like that. Well, uh, the follow-up to that was, is she, a, is she a player or gold digger? But you pretty much settled all of that right there. I can mark that. Unless you want to add something to that, that's, I'm going to mark that question well, off as well. Gold digger. Is she a gold digger? Because that was a specific question all that right, they asked. All right. I just Let me add, that. I'm going to be straight. We can speak honestly here. After you have sex, does she need to go shopping? Does she I take don't... you shopping and say, I... "Oh gosh, I wish I had this"? Oh, I, I, really I, want I didn't get an, I didn't get a follow I didn't get a follow up question on that. So, yeah. so uh, but I mean, if she if she's a gold digger, you're saying that she always wants material possessions. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Things. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Or they could play the long game and just hope to get your family money. Do you have a trust fund? Maybe. Did you just say the it. long game? Did you just say the long game? I've never heard it said like that before. Oh, I don't she know. could play I, the long game. No, I, I kind of like the way you said that, though. I have frozen terminology. I don't know that it exists <laughs> in the real world. I just make stuff up like dirty. You need a shirt that says that. <laughs> I should be wearing a shirt that says Susan, hashtag Susan ter terminology. Oh, well, That's, call, I like we that. We call them Susanisms. I like you know, Susanisms. Like, okay. Yeah, I just, right. I have words for stuff. You, you know, we, I, who is it I'm talking to? Somebody right now that I know is concerned because one of their family members has a woman who's definitely in it for the long, she's in the, for the long game for this guy's, oh, I know exactly who it is. There's for the long woman, game. She's yeah. waiting for him to die. I'm just, that's what no, popped no, no, into no, my no. head. What There's, do you mean? Long oh, the girl got pregnant. Okay. Oh, okay. And the, she likes the guy. She moved in with him. You know, somehow, oh, their housing doesn't work out. And you know, they're just in between. Suddenly they live with you and then guys get used to having you there and they never kick you out. But she conveniently got pregnant. So, of course, the guy's going to have to marry her. She, this guy has massive family money. And it's apparent to everyone but the fellow. And you would think the family would get a hold of it. But she's, she's dug it. She got that baby to get in there to get the family money. Because wow. now she knows. Because, listen, alimony is very hard to get nowadays. You could get it in the 20th century, not so much in the 21st. Maintenance, having a baby, you can get that. Yep. So, so the baby of, is the end. Wow. The baby's the end, whether you're married or okay. not married. Wow. That's crazy. So that's your lock for maintenance. And then, of course, the baby might need thirty or 40000 a month because, you know, we got to put them in good. I, it just. It goes on really and on. Got, you've got okay. to look at the lifestyle and what's important to them. I've had naive okay. clients who were like buying these this girl's shoes to make her happy. And, oh, God, wow. you know. Okay. Now. With that in mind, I'm going to read you a couple. Now, I'm looking at six questions that I got for you on the screen, and we're, we're, we're like uh, three minutes away from getting to those questions, everybody. So okay. keep them coming in that section that's here in the live, the questions section on your screen. We're going to be getting to those in about three minutes. But right now, I've got to give you something that's on the screen. What if you tend to attract people that are a good 10 years younger than you? That's coming from Izzy. Uh, from Mystic. And the problem is... And said <laughs> you're going to say that. I saw that coming. I saw that. Okay. So, I'm going mean, to go to the next one. That's a nice way you answer. This is an issue. Okay. That's if you're... I mean, you... Please tell me uh, you're at least 30 Okay. All right. Listen. Okay. Listen. The reality of it is everyone can remember that they had a crush on someone uh, when they were a, a teeny bopper. So that, that continues to happen. I say that uh, as, a, as a fact of life. It can happen. However, I do need to read you this. Um, you guys feel free to put in a name now. I'll, or If not, I'll call everybody Jane or John Doe. Uh, so John Doe or Jane says, if you are ugly, you are invisible to all women. Any thoughts on that? I have to admit, the her I'm not going to lie to anybody here. Looks I know count. you're I know you're not. That's looks why I'm count. doing this show with you. But go ahead. Looks count. What do they do? What are I you mean, saying, you Susan? Could what are you saying? Most, you gotta you got to try to work with whatever you've got to offset whatever you don't have. If if you know you're never gonna have a body or it's just so challenging for you, try to work on your personality, try and work on your scholastic skills, try and become successful, try and work on your on your sense of humor. Um work on your communication skills. If you are a man, I have something wonderful to share with you. And I think this is unique to most women. Men mm -hmm. are exceedingly visual. But yes. women, absolutely are visual too. But we True. have the ability to fall for a man that we would not be on our radar visually through repeated exposure because he's extraordinary. Other qualities make the looks more yeah. palpable. Um, you know, there is a lid for every pot. I promise you there is. <laughs> you just, you have to understand that we have to try. We have to make an effort. Yeah. If your teeth are crooked, yeah. try and make an effort. Yeah. If your hair needs fixing, get somebody to help you style with your right. clothing and dress. Sometimes it's presentation. There are some exceedingly unattractive men. 
They happen to be very rich. Therefore, we think they're passable. Put the same guy <laughs> in some kind of dirty outfit, like he's working on the street someplace. Right. And you'd never notice him. You put him in a suit he, and put him so, in Davos. So you're like, oh my he, God, I'm all over that, right? He's more than passable then. He becomes a part of the team, the playable team uh, worth at least checking out. Uh, but I got to read something to you now. I'm going to read this to you. These are your, this is a posting from you, and I just want to fit it in what you just said right now because this is something you posted back on August 3rd of this year, and it's a beautiful post. It says, limited tools create limited choices. It says, we are only as advanced as the tools we hold. When the time comes that current issues eclipse our given tool set, we will create new options. Yes. This is how we advance as individuals. Uh, so essentially, if a guy has very little tools to work with or a woman, you're saying to expand in areas that you excel in and don't be so focused that you're not desirable or someone wants you because you're comparing yourself to someone else. But hold what you have, the tools you have to the best of your ability. That's quite astute. I never thought of applying it to this direct situation. My concept was the evolution of humanity, but I got we you can, yeah. but, and, and to release ourselves from rigid structures of, of um, locked designs of how we have to be in the roles we play to each other. However, your interpretation was beautiful for the analysis for this person. You are lucky if you're a man. <laughs> And you're less than visually beautiful. Okay. <laughs> if you're a woman, you're I almost a know what oh, you're going to say before you I, say I, it, and I'm, I start laughing. That I is, know. I that is well, such a Susanism. But go well, ahead. We, we were separated at birth, Paxton. I don't know what to say there. <laughs> I that am was adopted. good. I mean, I'm just saying. I know what you, you know, mean. Who hey. knows? But, hey, I was told I was adopted. Maybe we were. We were just somewhere. Go ahead. But go oh, ahead. You were saying. Okay. okay. You were okay. saying before we get to everybody else's question here. But go ahead. Uh -oh. 26. I uh -huh. remember looking at myself. I looked kind of like a Hershey's kiss, you know, the kind that goes like this. I was 26. And I remember <laughs> looking in the mirror. We lived in Denver and oh, my parents did. I never physically lived there. They had a huge mirror in the bathroom that was my bathroom. Yeah. And I remember going, God, <laughs> you're 26. This is as good as it gets. I wouldn't want to be with you. So like just looking at you because I know oh, my. you guys were, yeah, honestly, pretty face. But the rest of it, I'm like, oh, my God, what do I do? And I thought, well, and I remember looking at myself going, well, you got it. You better develop a hell of a personality to offset all this. That's what I remembered thinking. Then I also met a pro bodybuilder, and he kind of started me down the road of uh, weightlifting and changing my diet and things like that. But I was completely non-athletic. You were so, non-athletic, but right now, verbally, you're one of the you're one of the best athletic ver verbal gymnasts that I've ever <laughs> met, and <laughs> I love you. doing a show with you because no matter what I throw at you, uh, and thank I've got you. more to throw at you because okay. I got to tell you, others are telling you Northern Colorado, Connecticut is here. That's uh, uh, Sherry from uh, we got Turkey in the house. Wow. Um, oh my goodness, others, but I, I've got to. I told everybody three minutes we were getting into these questions, and I'm, okay. I wanted to make sure I gave everybody enough time. Now we got eight of them, so we're gonna get, we're gonna delve into them. Um, but a statement from Izzy, she says negativity is the ugliest thing to women. Ooh, it breeds beautiful. the antithesis of confidence and self assurance. So I just wanted to let you know that that was her thought in regards nice. to men uh, being uh, negativity is something that's horrible. Um, someone is sending us a, a DM uh, that is sending a woman DMs uh, effective or does it look desperate? That's from Christopher Johnson. Uh, go ahead and uh, answer that. Uh, a DM um, and then I'm going to know where. Yeah, then I'm going to get to these questions, everybody. Go ahead. We, I, I mean, listen, people drop DMs in, in our box that uh, I, uh, the, the thing I find most offensive is they don't even follow me and they, they write like this much. It's like, really? Really? Uh, you write like nine sheets of things, but you don't even bother to follow me. But you can't just drop a DM in somebody's box with no point of reference. Then it looks a little creepy to women. If you've been on Clubhouse with her or you responded to a post and then you send her a polite DM, say, by the way, I have to tell you, I love your content or 
wow, your, yeah. your workout routine is great. At least have some context around it so you don't look creepy. But to yeah. uh, hit somebody up and just go, hi, hey, hi. It's, it's very, women have a natural uh, back off. We've just got it built in because we've had to protect ourselves from mm. unwanted passes and from men trying to do things to us that we didn't want to have happen. So a woman you, will- you get, You're getting a, load of, getting a load of hearts on the screen as you're talking right now. Go ahead. Women will be far quicker to say no to you than to say yes. Yeah. So for all the straight men out there that are, or women that are, well, women already know this for women, but all the straight men out there have a sense of um, humanity and at least warm up the conversation by posting and saying, I don't normally do this. I found you at your feed. I think the photographs mm -hmm. are beautiful. Just wanted to let you know they're very inspiring. Give her something. We love words. Why do you think we talk so much? We this love is, this is, words. Are you, saying, are you saying then this is why it's important to have communication skills? To be able to, to, to linguistically express oneself i'm laughing because there's jokes coming in my head i can't tell them right now uh, of guys of guys with words yes yeah. guys Woo guys um, words. guys don't be afraid of a dictionary let me just put it to you that way as my dad would say don't be afraid of a dictionary okay if you want to talk to a woman you know and no offense ladies same same too just it, it's okay to be able to to dig into a man and make him open up Sometimes you have to say some really heavy words to him and then let it just wait for it. And eventually he will tell you uh, his vulnerable parts. And when he does that, uh, you got him when he's that vulnerable. I've got to get to these questions because okay. we got eight. So here we go. Okay. Uh, now, remember, anytime I, I go to these questions, I have no idea what they are. Oh, but I, I will be editing. I will be editing them as I go because it is a family show. But anyhow, so uh, hold on one second. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Um uh, when an ex comes back after a year or more, should you give them a chance or past experience should be enough to stay away forever? Who should be given second chances? That's from Romania um, uh, is who that's from. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, it depends on what happened. If this person left you, dumped you, and hurt you, and they've come back after two years with little or no conversation other than occasionally bothering you by keeping the fire alive with a, hey, Merry Christmas, or whatever, um, you have to really say to yourself, wow, it didn't turn out with anybody else. They're just coming back to, you know, uh -huh. get, get comfortable. and So it, did, it, didn't work with, it didn't work with somebody else you're saying, so now they're coming back. Is what I don't okay. trust it unless... This, it, it's so in, it's so much dependent upon the context in the situation. If you had a really good relationship and something was mm -hmm. off, timing, they had a relative, they had a health issue, they had a reason that they couldn't focus on it, you were separated by distance, there's some plausible thing besides the two of you couldn't sort it out. Or let's say they had an addiction, they had a problem. Now they've sorted it out and you love them and you think in your heart of hearts, they're a good person. Not you mm. hope this time. Uh, that's different. Okay. I see what you're saying. Do not hope this time they're better. No bueno. You have to no see bueno. the transformation. Okay. And that's so, a, so a consistent pattern that they need to show you because I have a question for you, but you just answered it. And I like that because they were wondering, the, person, the, the guy that sent it in, uh, uh, he was wondering, matter of fact, it, it was an addiction, an addiction. Okay. They had a gambling, the woman had a gambling addiction. So they had, of course, he's lost a number of things. They've gone back and forth. And he was wondering what you're talking about right now. Should I take her back for like the 15 billionth time? And oh. uh, you make a good point. There should be some type of consistent pattern of change that they have made in order to, to trust them again. I lived with a compulsive gambler. Uh, it was a 10 year relationship. I had, I didn't know what it was. I, I, I mean, okay. I, I, I was never exposed to that. So I just thought it was mm. some hobby. I had no idea. And I mm. lost money in the process because wow. I loaned him money to put into his business. And I didn't know it was going into horse races, you know? And um, here's the thing about an addiction is they, they can have all good intention, but the addiction itself makes you lie to yourself and therefore lie to others. This time, this time yeah. you got it figured out. This time it's okay. It's not yeah. going to be the same again. So my question to you, 
dear man, why? Why uh, her? Why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why her out of all the billions of women in this world? Why are you going back to the one with the problem? If you have interesting a child, question. That's a I great question. It. But why? Out of everything, oh, here's the broken toy. Well, now the arm is a little bit mended. Well, I put it away because I know it was bad for me, but now I'm going to... Why? Why do you want to do that? Normally for a guy, it's like, oh my God, it was the best sex ever. Of course, crazy sex is the best sex ever because of all the volatility. But don't you... I mean, why her? I just have to ask. I'm, I, I believe mm. me, I, I, I've been around 12-step programs I, you know, I've been in ACOA, I've been in a numerous 12-step programs, and I, my mother was an alcoholic. I mean, I've been around the block here, and I'm all for people getting better, and I know that there are people who one day at a time mm -hmm. can manage their addiction, but I just want to know why you need to ask yourself, why do I want her and why do I need her? Knowing the problems that I've had that are historic. Please. When it comes when it comes to individuals choosing to spend time with someone for the rest of their life, it's really good to know why they're doing it, which means they would have to know themselves, right? And ask themselves some hard questions. Exactly. Let alone let alone the other person. Uh, we better it's, get to these other questions that you have here as well, too. Your, your uh, let's relationships see here. are an investment. It is your time and energy. This is why in the beginning, it doesn't matter. You've got tons of time, tons of energy. As you start to mature in life, you start to realize that Sandow has yeah. less time and less yeah. energy. You That's start right. getting That's very right. discerning on where you're going to yep. put your time and energy. Okay? That's right. Yep, that's right. And not that either one of us would know that being that we're both 38 <laughs> or Jack, Jack, oh, Jack, Benny, wait, Jack Benny, 39. I maybe put it that I, way. All right. I, I better, actually, I better get to I these. Or they're, they're... Turned 40, I know. <laughs> okay. So you all, win. wait a minute, wait a minute. You actually turned 40. That makes me yeah, 70. Okay. I'll here be, we go. Here we go. So, uh, here we go. Hi, Susan. This is, uh, from, I'm just going to call her 88 K. Um, oh wait, no, she had her the name there. This is from, uh, I'm going to just, our, our Megan, our Megan, um, hopefully I did that right, from Vancouver, uh, please forgive me. It says, how do I stop blaming myself for falling for a narcissistic person uh, at the same time I feel I was at fault? Such a roller coaster. Oh, sweetie. Well, okay, this is your, this is your turf. So I'm going to try and be brief, and then I'd love to hear anybody with a uh, narc abuse. You, you've got a, a, a ton of information. Uh, first of all, part of the reason that you feel that it's your problem and that you're guilty is the whole narc, narc thing going yeah, on yeah. here. They, they mm -hmm. make you feel guilty for their mistakes. Yeah. So that's, that's not on you. That's been given to you. I'm going to do a show, and I think I've done a video on forgiving ourselves for loving them. As a matter of fact, that's going to be yes, my next have. live show. Mm -hmm. And Joan Jett had a, had a great song. Okay. I hate yeah. myself <laughs> for loving, yeah, loving. you. Yeah. This happens, okay? It's in your history. It's in your family. I would definitely get into therapy. Forgive yourself for the imprints <laughs> that you had no control over as a child. You're seeking approval from somebody that's never going to give it to you. Never. Yeah. You're never going to. You're never going to relax. You're never going to feel okay. You're never going to be okay. You are chasing something that's never going to happen. And quite unfortunately, most of our adult life unconsciously is spent trying to change our fat, our past. From our family yeah. history and it's just not going to happen yeah and then if we end up in a relationship with someone who is self-absorbed uh haughty uh selfish extremely selfish and self-centered or in other words a narcissist uh, is the common uh, term that's used today but overall they were self-centered when they met you they were self-centered when they projected themselves onto you they're going to be self-centered when they walk out the door uh, so when they come back there's a pretty good chance they're going to be even more self-centered when they come back so either way it goes, it's not your fault, but it is uh, it is a learning curve uh, in which you can you can control. You literally can decide to spend more time and energy on yourself yeah. for the next chapter that you're about to write. Uh, and uh, hey, you know, don't even look back. 
just keep going straight ahead. But Susan, you're absolutely correct. I need to get to the other ones before people get mad at me. Okay. So, no. so here we go. You're here sure we go here. As as no, 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 no. <laughs> we're, 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 we're tag teaming today. Let's look okay. like, hey, hey. Wait a okay, so it says, can you tell me how to move on? He still wants to see me. Uh, wait, hold on. She's got a follow up to that. Um, um, he, uh, I'm just going to edit this. He, he, he cheated on her. Uh, let's see what else. <clears throat> dating, dating 13 weeks. I said to him, I love you. Uh, he doesn't feel the same. Uh, I want to let him go. Uh, am I doing, uh, the right trying? Is she doing the right thing by trying to hold on, uh, to what I just read to you? You're up, Susan. All yours, my friend. So I, I'm going to think that you're kind of young in dating and love and romance. Now, what would make you say that? Because she's in love in 12 weeks. That's not love. I know it feels like love. I know it feels what like love. What would you call it? Well, if you were going to tell that her right would now. Be question number one that you asked. I knew, I knew you were going to do that. That's, what, that's, <laughs> that's why I started this. Yeah, so... Um, it's okay, sweetie. For you, it is a real emotion. And you know, it's accumulative. This may be the greatest attraction you've had to date. So, of course, you're going to use the word yeah. love, right? But it's not real love. If you just started dating somebody, I don't think you were, I don't think you were in a formal relationship where he committed to be your boyfriend. So he cheated on you. He's not done looking. I think you're fairly young or and I mean young or or young to dating, okay? I would keep moving. He wants you now because you rejected him. So that's the game. He's I was going to, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to yeah. say, if I was telling my daughters that, and they told me that, I said, let me tell you how this goes. Yeah. You told him no. Yep. Or you gave him some sensation that it was coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, okay, I got to get her back. Because the, yeah, because there's a, there's a pretty good chance. I'm just locker room talk that yeah. goes on. Guys will yeah. go like, okay, get her back. And there's a 75% chance uh, that you're going to, yeah, you're going to get dumped because he's going to, he's going to hold on for a little bit and then he's yeah. going to dump you because he has to feel he needs to win. But yeah. that doesn't yeah. mean it applies to him. Maybe he's one in a trillion. And if that's the case, you will find out. But uh, waiting doesn't hurt. Working on yourself and waiting doesn't hurt. But uh, you, so, you make a good point. Too fast. Let's, let's infatuation. Just note, let's note for everybody here the takeaway. When you resist somebody, because they're really not stepping up and leveling up to where you are, and you Bingo. notice that now they want you even more, oh, yeah. you should be so, like, red flag, red, red flag, flag, red yeah. flag. That means yeah. now Lights going you've, off. Yeah. You've increased in value because you don't yeah. want them. That yep. means they love games. They'll tell you no, especially here. Here's the thing. Everyone I ever met that goes, I hate game. I don't play. I hate game. They're the biggest game players. They don't know they're playing game. It's insane. First one to play a game. Oh, First one to play a game, right? Exactly. Why is that, Susan? Seriously, though, why is that? I, I think they've, gro they've grown up with it. They don't know. Oh. They don't know what real interaction is. They only know. This the the push and pull dance. the push yeah. and pull the the yeah. the break up and make up break up. that was yeah. actually another one of the questions but you just answered that as well somebody wanted to know uh, how do I end this cycle of make up break up uh, and they've been together for for decades uh, and uh, it was a, it was a few of questions like that one person uh, she had been with the guy for decades and it's like you know one morning they're in love and then you know he comes home from work and he hates her and he wants to go you know, get a hotel room and she wants to, you know, it's just but that, what you're there, saying there is mental illness there. There could be there may there's of, usually more to it than yeah. one partner is trying to have a relationship. And the other partner is either playing a game or there may be other factors in play. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what you say? Let me let me get to another question that we okay. have here for you. Uh, let's see here. We did that one. We did that one. OK, so here we go. Uh, I edit these as I go, everybody. I love each and every one of you, but it is a family show. Hi, Susan. I just want to uh, went to Paris as as a third date with a guy. Oh, it wow. was a it was amazing. The chemistry was off the charts. A week later, he said he really likes me, and he had fun too. But he doesn't feel it's enough for him for a real relationship. We live in different countries. Mm -hmm. 
and it says, I'm heartbroken, help. That's from uh, Cinnamon. Uh, oh, excuse me, Cinnamon Bun 1. I, Go ahead. I, I, I have a fe I, well, I'd like to hear your um, thoughts on this, but I, I have a feeling that he just doesn't want to do the distance thing. Uh, and so that shows me that as much as you felt for him, if he wants something easier, a girl around the block, you know, he doesn't want, so he's not willing to put effort into it. The so what's, guy, so what's, the, what's the word, what's the word for that? You asked my input. I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's the word I was going to tell you. Yeah. When I read that, go ahead. Here's the thing. If you moved and lived two blocks away, he still wouldn't put effort into it. I was going to say he would still be late. You got me. I high five from a distance. I was going to say same thing. It does not matter what you do. If you told him to take the trash out, he would want to fight with you and walk out because you told him to, and he's lazy. Uh, so if you, you know, you would probably find out he wears the same clothes over undergarments over and over because he does, it's too much work for him. It's just so, some guys uh, can be really lazy. Well, all, <laughs> all of us can, but it's, it, it, yeah. so what we are trying to look for is a person's disposition. Absolutely. What is their inherent natural disposition? And especially if you are looking for a meaningful relationship, do they apply effort in the relationship? Most everybody on here is contacting us because the person that they want is not giving them the effort they need. So you're trying to jostle yeah. them to place yeah. it. Half the time, it's just the yeah. person you're working with, you, right? You, you can't squeeze blood out of a turnip, as, as my dad would say. So you just, you, you, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to get something that you can't. Once they show you they don't want to make the effort, yeah. that's the best gift that they lazy. could give you. Yeah, and that's they the best love gift. You and be lazy. Oh, no, they, they could love your qualities. Yeah, they oh. could love your qualities immensely. Because they haven't had better th up to yeah. that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it comes to uh, some more questions, I've got to throw this in. and I'm going to get to those on the screen in a second, but I've got this other screen here. Gary Harris 19 says this to you, Susan. Susan, what is your opinion on negative self-talk? I've met quite a few people in dating uh, who doubted themselves and lost faith in the possibility of experiencing love due to their past circumstances and relationships so negative self-talk what's your opinion on it gary wants to know i know gary because he shows up for the live show you're on the money you know just listening uh on clubhouse this morning this guy was playing dale carnegie how to think and grow rich mm -hmm. and and you know he's talking about what you have to tell yourself every day and all of um you know our our constructs with cognitive therapy uh, cognitive behavioral therapy mm. teaches us that what we think yeah. is what we believe. So, for example, yeah. a gal comes in and she's had three guys cheat on her. You're the fourth mm -hmm. guy. You are screwed. And yeah, you're, you're done. She's like, okay, my past does not have to be my present and it does not have to be my future. And I am working hard and I am going to trust you. But most people are not there. So you've got to overcome what three guys have done before you. And it's just hard because she has a belief system that says yeah. all men cheat. So Gary, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to rob the bank. You're going to rob the bank. And he's hearing that every day. You're going to rob the bank. And right. eventually he's going to rob the bank. And she goes, see, I told you you're exactly like, it. and he's going like, I never even had it crossed my mind. Exactly. And it's so no matter, it's a circle conversation because whatever that negativity from the past was, eventually it becomes a reality in the present and future. Uh, but anyhow, I, I have to tell you, um kate here is agreeing with you she says yes you have to take someone for who they really are not for their potential so i just wanted to throw that in um wait a minute i'm gonna ask you this now somebody's typing here 88k uh, oh wait that's uh our megan uh says it reminds me of your empty bus story in oh, new york what what is yeah, that yeah, all yeah, about yeah. susan what's okay, an so empty <laughs> these are great stories i love this I try to use stories so that people can get an idea of what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, right. In the 80s, it was so dangerous to ride the subway, slashing, murders. I mean, so okay. everybody went above ground. And when you couldn't get a cab, you waited for the bus. And so I'm okay. waiting on 8th Avenue. I can see that the bus, people are crammed in there like this. They're screaming at each other. And everybody's clamoring to go in there. And they're all mad and pissed off. And then I kept thinking, okay, I can do this. Or I can just wait till the next bus. So this is what we think about people. Like, oh my God, if I don't get it, I'll never be another one. I'll never be 
never, never, never. If I, this has to be the one. I'm so tired. It's right. so much work. And then if we just go, wait a minute. I'm not getting on that thing. This is too crazy. I'm going to wait. There will be another I love bus. It. This I love another it. Bus. And that bus is empty. It's got four people. They're chilling. They're relaxed. <laughs> You, you know, got elbow room. Yes. You got elbow room. Yes. You can breathe. <laughs> and you were trying to get in on that cramp thing. Yes. And it's like, hey, you people better stop that now. I'm gonna go and get off there. I'm gonna go get on therapy on you. You better stop all that trying to chase people yeah. that don't want you. Okay. And if it's a narc if it's a narc, trust me, they don't want you. <laughs> they just want to use you. All right, so I'm gonna get something here off the screen. Uh we're gonna go back there and I am gonna read this to you. Uh hi Susan. This is Simone from Bulgaria. Okay, it says, uh, I appreciate the effort and time you dedicate to all of us. Uh, that's for you, oh. Susan. It says, thank you sincerely. And uh, it looks like that. Uh, oh, I'm going to tear that up. It looks like a heart or something there. It says, I have the following question. Should I sacrifice my hobbies for my relationship? Some call this a compromise. Is this it? Oh, nope. that's a good one. No. Well, why Why is it an either-or question? I'm very confused. Yeah. Unless your hobby is that you're a professional <laughs> golfer and you've got to be gone five hours every day. and you're Robbing banks, hours. maybe? Or, yeah. yeah or, I Murdering know, people. Yeah. Uh, why? So why is your partner against you having this hobby? And yeah. why are they not, like, on board with you? Because a real partner that you should keep, uh, what is it, Dogobadia? What, what's the word for thank you or hello? Go, go, Because I was just in Bulgaria. You'd think I'd remember. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they uh, would say thank you, essentially? I think, well, yes, yes. And How you like, say the word? Bogo, Daria, Bogo, Daria, or something like that. I'm sure Somebody help us know. out there. Somebody help yeah, us yeah. out. Okay, go ahead. Um, but why is this a conflict? What is it about your partner? You know, there are women who don't want their boyfriend to go to the gym. Because they don't want to yeah, look I've heard they that. don't want to see I've other heard that. gals. Yeah. They don't want people yeah. to want him. It's like the guy that wants yeah. to keep his wife home and doesn't want her to go to work because yep. he doesn't want to heard have yep. anybody come after her. Yep. Yeah. Why is it an issue? Um, I mean, if it takes 20 hours out of every day, maybe I can understand. But yeah. are you telling him how often he can work for his career? <laughs> or take a shower? Or, yeah. <laughs> or, or eat? You know... It, a hobby can be the very thing that keeps a person ignoring the other person's imperfection. It can be the very thing in a relationship that keeps them busy enough so they're not sitting there going like, you know what, you really annoy me when you do that. <laughs> but instead, they go like, you know what, I'll be over here in the, in the, in the other room. <laughs> I'm going to get my crochet now. My daughter and I, uh, one of my daughters is here, my other one's on vacation, and, and we're here, and we watched this movie last, last night or night before last. Anyhow, the movie, this poor woman was taking care of her man, her husband. He was a cripple. She's taking care of him, and he was mean. She got a, she got a jury summons to, to go. She was so ecstatic <laughs> to go sit on a jury every day just to get away from him. <laughs> just to get, but we were laughing because it's amazing how people can can not see that they're smothering someone else or not allowing them to breathe. And that sounds like a situation she was getting into. There's so much more happening. We're not going to ignore everybody, but we want you to know we will be back next week. Uh, Susan, I got everybody's writing different things to you. Uh, well, thank you. It, you know, yes. Everybody who thinks they have a certain question that's never going to get answered, just please listen because if you really, somebody is going to ask some yep. version of what Absolutely. you want to know. That's what happens in these long form things. So while you think, yes. you know, it's unique, but um, yeah. Yes. What is the ego game? Have you ever heard, I mean, somebody's talking about uh, an ego in their ego, E-G-O. Mm -hmm. The ego game, can the ego get in the way of love flourishing? Of course. Well, ego is when you want to win. You've kind of, at this point, you hate your partner because they're driving you so crazy, but you, you put so much into it, you just want to win. Or you want to get them back because now you dump them and now there was somebody else and wow, they're like, they look a little bit better. And now he or she finds them attractive and now you want back what you threw away. So that's ego. Wow. Wow. 
Now, uh, Salvatore uh, says, I love you, Susan. Always and forever, the light you bring with a heart. And, you know, Susan, I don't know how many times you're getting proposals Salvatore. during these shows. I don't we know had... which, I have a very dear Salvatore, and I don't know whether this is that man, but I have a Salvatore... very special Sal. Yeah, I think this is the same. I think he was here before. The, you know, we had over 300 some odd people the last show. We went almost two hours. And uh, we're, we're no doubt going to get to that the same. Um, there's so much. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going through a few things here. I just got to read you this one before I read some more off the screen. It says, I'm heartbroken. I need someone I want to be loved because I'm bored in the house. Uh, that's coming. That's coming. I'm sorry. I, I tried to say it without laughing. That's the name. So, hey, that's from Shamil. Shamil in the UK, I believe, if I've said that correctly. Please forgive me if I said it wrong. That's the straightforward. That's what we get here when uh, you and I are together. Straightforward. There's a lot of people who talk about uh, relationships, but uh, I like having you on because you're straightforward. So, have at it. This is Shamil in the UK, right? That's what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. First, I, maybe it's a woman. I, so listen, the worst place you could be is to be bored and then want to import somebody to give you a life force. Only because, well, a couple of reasons. You don't have your own life. And two, then you will be their creature. If like Bobby is so exciting and you think being with Bobby is going to be it and he's going to love you and make you happy and give you all this stuff. Imagine if Bobby walks out of your life. I'm horrible. Worse than where you are now, because now you've actually lost the taste. You got to experience something. Now you're going to ha never have it again, you think. So in order to really date well and be successful and feel grounded and safe, we mm -hmm. do need to like ourselves and we need to try to develop as much as we can within ourselves so that we're going to be so compelling they would never want to leave us. So oh, wow. if you're bored... I would ask you, what do you love? You, maybe you haven't, you know, it, it's putting so much pressure on a person to import excitement to us. They're just a human being. They're not that exciting. When you get to know them, they've just got issues like you do, right? <laughs> they just look shiny because you don't know them. Are, right? we, are we related in some kind of way besides just think. maybe when, when, when everything was created, so. Adam and Eve? Like, because... Really? You said exactly what I was, was thinking, and you said it, and I'm going like, how did she do that? Is she in here? How much power does Susan actually have? Uh, hey, so here we go. I guess somebody's agreeing with you on what you just said because uh, earlier, the roots of empathy, Tim, he wrote this. Thank you, Tim, for being here, a regular uh, uh, follower of the shows and our guests. Learn to stay alone. Learn to know yourself, your true self. He says, no comparing to others, be honest to yourself, then you can search for a partner and trust your gut, feelings and decisions. And then he puts period, the word period, and then period he, he puts. So what a beautiful statement. He's agreeing with you uh, as well, Susan. When I looked in the mirror 26 at this, um, like, you know what I mean by Hershey's kiss. I would have been a white Hershey's kiss. <laughs> you are just, right? you know, like, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people like kisses, and a lot of people like white Hershey kisses. Okay, okay so, right. so we just, you know what? So we're gonna get you a new name now. We're just gonna back then and now to the day. You're still white chocolate. So we just, okay. we, we just white chocolate. chocolate. Okay, so I love there white you go. Chocolate. Okay, all right, go so, ahead. Go ahead. Um, I looked at myself and I realized that the number one thing a man would want would be physique, and it's like, <laughs> I hated running. I didn't want to jump. I mean, I, I played with adults and dogs and, and horses. I mean, I didn't have playmates. I didn't have brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, I thought, oh, my God. So, I, again, I looked for what could I develop. Okay. The, developing ourselves is a guarantee that we will enjoy living with ourselves and a okay. pretty good qualifier that somebody else will find us interesting. Wow. Because, right, because the more that we yeah. put into our bank, for mm -hmm. those that have a clean mirror, not a dirty mirror, they should mm -hmm. be able to see and go, oh, my God, wow. Yeah. So yeah. we got to put no. the riches in here, yeah? So I have a question. So if they don't have a dirty mirror and they see us, mm -hmm. 
does that mean then that a person is going to recognize that someone else actually appreciates us? Or will we sometimes maybe not give ourselves credit to recognize that this person thinks we're amazing? Somebody may think we're amazing and we might just say, oh, thank you. It might not be a romantic match, but sometimes we don't even realize what we are. You know, there are people that are humble. There are people that are delusional. Yes, no, yeah, yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> that's true, too. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's pretty good. You need to do a video on that, too. Delusional and, and the humble. Um, yeah. I got to read this. I got to read this to you here. No, I'm going to go back up here because they just keep coming in up here. So I'm not going to ignore everybody here. Here we go, Susan. Another one for you. Hi, Susan. Is going no contact and radio silence the best thing to do to change someone's mind after a breakup? That's coming from Aaron Spark. Aaron Spark wants to know, is no contact and radio silence the best thing to do to change someone's mind after a breakup? I assume change their mind to come back. I'm just going to give him that one. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's game. And if they didn't value you the first time and they broke up with you, yes, you will look more interesting because you're pushing them away. This goes back to our former conversation. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. But when they come back, you're going to have to let that guard down and be yourself again. And they didn't, that's, they don't want that. So, uh, you know, maybe I'm of the school to move forward, move forward at least uh, you know, the thing is, you may go radio silent, but I guarantee you, you're going to be checking your phone. Like, are they thinking about me? Looking at their Instagram page, try, trying to follow them, see what they're doing. So if you're not free, they will only find you truly magnetic when you really don't give a damn. You've just walked forward and you find something else more yeah. exciting. Then they're going to be like, yeah. oh, my God, I lost you. And but yeah. the, the whole whimsical nature of that. It's not a good setup. It's not for the real thing. Yeah. The real thing is the key, because that's kind of how yeah. you started uh, the conversation when we talked about infatuation. Right. You you yeah. lean into the real thing, because sometimes people can be chasing, as it were, uh, a dream or a fantasy or a Disney creation and not yep. recognize that they really have given their energy to somebody who does not care about them. Um, so much more happening, and I got to get it, get to it. Uh, by the way, I just got to throw this into you here. This is, uh, let's see the name here. Oh, I passed it up. Here we go. Give me a second. Wild Zeppelin. Uh, Wild Zeppelin, I'm just going to answer in Susan's behalf. Behalf. We both, yes, from the last show, I highlighted that there were things, technically three things, uh, that fundamentally men focus on. Uh, and when a woman taps into those, um, you will literally be in his gray matter. You, he will, it will be very hard for him to function let alone forget forget you, even if you moved on or, or he decided to attempt to move on. But we'll get to those. They keep highlighting, please don't forget to answer the thing about men. And I, I'm not. I've seen your, your, your constant statements here. I haven't ignored you. It's just that I was getting to everybody else. I will mention that before we end the show uh, today. I do want to talk about um, Jabu 65. And I'm just going to read this to you, Susan, and you could uh, take it whatever direction you want to go in. She writes this. I have just left my partner of seven years. He withdrew his affection from me uh, for the last 10 months of this year. I asked him why. He said that it was my fault. I asked him to leave a few days later. Uh, there's a lot of conversation there, of course, we were not privy to. Uh, but then she also says he was beyond angry. I felt that I was going crazy uh, since he has left. Things have been moved um, just in an overall statement, feel free to tackle that one. We don't know what his issues are. So there you go. Yeah. I know that there's limited space for you to write. And I know that this is not an ideal environment to really do Correct. personal coaching, but he didn't communicate why he's angry. And so he's holding a resentment. And I don't think you understand what it is. And how are you supposed to fix it? You're not telepathic. He's angry. Yeah. You're upset. He's got to tell you, you did this, you did this, you didn't do that. You did, and so there has to be a talk out. So yeah. I think that, I think you, I would approach him if you want him back or you at least want clarity. I would say, I think that you owe us a conversation. You're mad, you're mad at me and I do not know why. 
if I've done yeah. something truly despicable, I'd like to hear it because if it's really hurtful and I didn't see it, I want to apologize. And if it's something that is misinterpreted, I need to explain it. We can go our separate yeah. ways, but let's clear mm -hmm. this because it's been enough time that we owe it to each other to have an honest communication. I don't know that he will, but that helps your resolution and you moving forward. It, it, is, uh, it, is, it is amazing how many times we can do something or try to put something together and get the instructions. And if somebody leaves out part of the communication in the instructions, we're at a disadvantage to make a complete uh, cabinet. I, I love to cook. I love to cook. So I, I hate to get a recipe. And if part of it is missing, that, which that doesn't happen, but if it did, I'm up to, I got to, I got to fake it to try to make it. Well, people do that in their relationships too. They, they there are recipes in every relationship. You just got to know who you're dealing with and, and you find out what makes them tick. But sometimes people don't want to communicate, you know, now is speculation. And that's what you and I are doing with that statement. And, but we would love you. We love you, Jabu 65 for, for doing that. But it, it puts you in a position where you're saying what you've just said. You're being, uh, am I, uh, in other words, she's asking, am I being paranoid? It, you know, I will get paranoid if I don't paranoid. have a complete recipe. You know, I mean, you can, you can start yeah. to look a lot of different, you, you'll speculate yourself right into a grave. Uh, just communication is the best way to go. And uh, not everybody wants to do it. You can't control that. But uh, Susan is giving some really good things to think about. If you can't have a communication and a sit down, an adult conversation, the same way you would on a job, Exactly. Before they fire you or hire you, the, there's a sit down conversation. And so if that's for for money, if it's for a lifelong commitment, you should be able to have a sit down just like you would for a job. That's right. I mean, that's hey, right. most people sit down on the toilet to, to handle that business. So you, <laughs> you should be able. I'm sorry. I got crude yeah. there. Let me let no. me give you give yeah, you some more here when you when you get a chance. I mean, we get a chance here. Uh, I hate to do that. We're going to keep moving here. But uh, we got. Uh, OK, here we go. Um, do, 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 do. let's see who we got here. How to date in COVID world. It okay. has become much easier for a guy to set the first date over his place. Um, how can you essentially stay safe and meet people? I'm assuming is what she's asking when it comes to having a lifelong commitment in COVID world. Do you, do you deal with COVID on your, on your we, show? I know I, I don't. I did much. a year ago, but we don't so much now because yeah. in the United States, you have the option to have, you know, um, the vaccine. Now, yeah. this might be um, important to those of you that do not have access to the vaccine or you do not want to be vaccinated, in which case, you know, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you would need to know their status, where they are in both the vaccination, how many shots, and if they need a booster. And you, you're going to have to make smart choices. So, I mean, so I give them a smart choice. Get some popcorn, get some pizza, uh, get a Subway sandwich, get, get a Jersey Mike's, get some ice cream, and sit at home and mind your business until it's all over. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. No. All right. okay. No. I'm just you kidding. Can certainly it see could each cost other. you your life. People did not stop. I mean, during people were breaking lockdown. People were hooking up. People were there were sex clubs here in New York. There was all sorts of stuff. People needed family show. To see their family needed. show. Okay, they there <laughs> were um, all sorts of things going on in New York where people found a way to connect with others. And I think that what happens is you're going to have to make your own decision. This is kind of like not such a hot topic for most no, of it's the not. world right now. No. It's, so it's, it's not, it's, it's not, uh, yeah, you because of either yeah. decisions you've made or where you live. Yeah. I, I wanted to make sure to get as many questions in as possible. Uh, Anne is, is saying, uh, I don't know what part, but she's highlighting a great question. Uh, thank you, Anne, for being here. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I have a whole lot more to read to you, but I want to do something here. Uh, make sure I get everybody here. Okay, so the pack coach says, Dear Susan, how to not convert dating experience into therapy session? Uh, how much do you reveal to your partner? I mean, there's, there's sharing. There's getting to, to know each other. Um, you're not there to correct and change. I, I do have 
a friend who kind of ther- therapizes or whatever you want to call it, uh, her, her partners, and I think it must <laughs> drive them crazy. And I know she's uh, had a ton of therapy, but man, if you want to turn somebody off, all you need to do is start to correct their psychology and point out all their problems. The family oh, tree, my, the family oh, tree my, and the generational trauma that they've been through and the breakdown, oh, the, the, oh. the 15 different steps that you need to keep in mind so that you can move beyond what your mom and dad did to you. And they go on and on and on. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, what is your advice sure. then? What is your advice to this uh, person who is a coach themselves? If they're doing it to you, tell them I have a therapist. Thank you. We can talk about the things that affect our direct relationship. And send me the bill. To, I send know, me the bill. Trying to fix them. Oh, th- this person is a coach themselves and a therapist. Is that what you're uh, saying? Not a, not a therapist, but they're, they're a coach, uh, a life coach. As well. Hey, look, at they. it's like if I marry a divorce lawyer, I knew what I was getting into, right? Like it is what it is. So um, they're with a life coach. You are obviously, I mean, how can you not see <laughs> your life is Your life is going to be examined? Is that what you're saying? Well, yes. I mean, they, they signed up for that. That's kind of what you do. It's going to be hard for you to not fiddle around and yeah. try and help them. So, Like being with a police two, officer, right? Yeah. The two of you have to decide is where is the, the line between I'm your partner who loves you and trying to suggest something for your betterment. And now yeah. this is disagreeable information that feels makes you feel pressured and anxious yeah it, that's a tough situation it's like um oh my goodness um uh, when you live with a pro bodybuilder there can't be any food in the house i mean i'm sure that they do it but i didn't <laughs> you know? i never saw I, that coming I, well, that's I a really good stuff. analogy i like i like the way you, that's I true so though much weight just trying to have a clean house for my partner <laughs> And then I had a friend stay overnight, and he said he was ready to go eat the dog food. There were no carbs in the house. <laughs> there was no he food said, in that. Yes. Said, like, that's a good know? one. You got eggs and lettuce and, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> that's, that's knowing your partner there. Because if you, you should know what you're signing up for. If that, part, that partner is uh, – yeah. if, you're, if you're, your husband or wife is going to be a bodybuilder, you should know you're going to have a very interesting food bill. Uh, and it's gonna, yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, Ann Crosby says, I am having a booster soon and thinking about dating again. And I'm just, you know, you're a regular to the show. I, you know, I don't, I don't, how do you have time to, to even see anyone else? I thought you were only watching our show, but anyhow, all right. Um, she's, she's saying she is glad to hear that question, uh, concerning, um, the shot. I make sure I got everybody there. I've got to tell you this. We have gone one hour and 15 minutes, and I have enjoyed myself, but I cannot let you go. I was going to do two sessions, but we are going to – I need time to get ready for next week, everybody. So we're not okay. going to stay all day with you now. But there are some that I got that I have to read to you now. Okay. And, uh, okay, you should not say okay. They are really yeah. – I have to do some digging to <laughs> to. Weed out oh, you're, certain you're things. trying to get some tough ones for me. I know. That's all right. <laughs> yes, I, I am. That. I actually am. No, I like I, that. Be- you know, we I, hear I, all the main stuff. It's fun to get stuff that people okay. go, oh, my God, I can't believe they asked that. I want to get into this aspect that somebody wrote about. Um, two things real quick. You can take it as one question or two separate statements that you could tackle them. Being desperate and settling. Very good so I kind of lumped them together. So it's I don't, great. I don't know. You, it's, great. it's your your forte. But how how to not look desperate, and how can I tell if I'm settling? So I just kind of lumped questions together. So what do you say? What do you say, boss? <laughs> um, I'm going to try to be brief. We need to know reasonably and honestly with ourselves what our options are. There are times that I know people Mm. have settled. I know they've settled and they know they've settled. But you know what Uh, they settled for? The one that they could have. They wanted something. Um, There wasn't a lot of choice. There just wasn't either in their environment or they wanted them. And they made the best choice. And in that way, it's not settling. It is an active choice. Being Wait, they're, they're not settling in their mind? but everyone else can see they're settling? Is that what you're saying? So to them, they're what saying, they I made the wanted, best choice. What, what they wanted was not possible. 
Got it. Okay. Either there was something about them that was less appealing, that they were not the top of the charts. They may have wanted a certain kind of partner. Got it. Like a lot of guys want the, you know, a playboy model or a swimsuit girl. And maybe they're not going to get a 10. Maybe they're going to get a seven or a six that loves them and is fabulous and brilliant hey, and that's, whatever. That's, that's that's a whole show we need to do separately because I got my opinions on that. But go ahead, because I got two daughters and I, I think they're twelve. So, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Yeah, okay, but go, ahead. Bet they yeah. are. but go ahead. You were um, gonna say desperate is where we take anything we can get, and that is true settling. Desperate means I'm so bereft of feeling that I can get anything that I'll take wow. anybody who will love me, right? And then you will suffer for settling. It I was gonna say to that that opens up that opens up a whole set of problems because if they are mentally disordered or a number of their family tree, wow. And then if you have children with them and it just, it could be a mess by being desperate is what you're saying. But settling is, go ahead, please. There's desperate and you choose yeah. something that you know is not good for you because you just take it Got because it. you're afraid there's no, le no other bus. You just grab it because you want to get yeah. it. And that's not going to be to your benefit. And it will feel wrong. It'll feel kind of horrible inside when you do it. And then there's, there is making a reasonable and rational choice given all the options that you had. And you mm -hmm. may have wanted something a little bit better, but when you really yeah. look at this, you know, where do we stop gambling? When we have a partner, what's enough? Right? Do, where do we is, stop do we, gambling? Do we, do, do, what do risk? We, right, do we throw 80% in? going, I'm, I'm going to give up 80 because maybe I can get 85. I mean, uh, maybe Jeff Bezos can do that. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, Giselle well, Mission can do that. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, like, or, 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 or you know, Brad, not even, or something, you know what I mean? No, not, like, not, it, not even them, because oh. you, when, it, when it comes right down to it, they still have to go to bed at night, put their head to a pillow. And they know when they've settled, regardless of what's in their bank account or what movie script they're reading. Yeah, you know, uh, and, uh, yeah. people, people yeah, have pretty... these fan fanciful ideas of what they think their partner should be with outer right. trappings. And if you find somebody who loves you, who's good to you, that you think is interesting, that you think makes a good mate, this may yeah. just be, you might think you're settling because, oh, he should have been they don't a have, They don't have this. They don't have yeah, this. They don't, five, don't, don't. Seven instead of five, ten. Five, nine. Yeah, I, yeah know, right. right. It, yeah. So we may hey, think we're settling. Hey, that would actually, be crazy. That would be crazy if they're thinking the same thing when they're with us. They <laughs> they're are. Like, they're, and now both are saying it. Yeah. And it's like, they, you know, would you say if they're good to you, uh, you know, it's somebody that you find interesting maybe a little shorter or, you know, maybe a little pudgier, maybe a number of things. There may be a Hershey's kiss, yeah, but, but yeah, they're yeah. they're but you know, they're worth it because they have something to give back. So if a person brings something to the table and it's not what you expect, you're saying, don't think that you should say no, because there may be something there. Yeah. Love comes in surprising boxes. And, wow. uh, you think I ever thought I'd be here now? This was, I was done. I was playing golf. I was like done. You know, I had my career wow. in finance and in television and stuff. So I was done. Yeah. But, but um, I met somebody who was younger and I fell madly in love and it kind of kicked me into this. And that's not the package I was looking for. <laughs> that yeah. wasn't yeah. the <laughs> ride I expected it wasn't, to get on. Wasn't but the I ride. got but... on it and I committed to it and a number of things happened because of it. Yeah. So, what our society may tell us or our parents or our friends may tell us we should want. This is the, this is the, the distinction I want. It, are you settling because somebody else is telling you what you should have? Or are you settling because you really know that that person isn't leveled up to where you are and you know that it's going to be a suboptimal relationship? Those are two very different distinctions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because you have landed where you are now, and that doesn't mean with us here, but uh, mainly because you are Susan. You are, you are S-E-W. You sew everything together. Susan E. Winter puts things together for people so they can get a perspective. That's what I like about you. Yeah, are you just uh, so, saying that or are you reading that? Is that you? 
I'm telling you that. Yeah, that is me. That's been, that's my heart and my mind. Oh, okay. All right. No, no, that, no, I'm not reading that. No, that was for me. No, I just thought, oh, I just thought about that. Yeah, I can see where you're saying that because I have my head down. But no, that's what I think and feel about you. Because you literally, that's why I always love saying Susan E. Winter, because in my mind, I think of the I think of the word S.E.W. So yeah, you sew yeah, things yeah. together for people. But I have to tell you, Laura Harris London says, thank you, Susan. You are wonderful. Love all your advice. And she gets, you know, you two two hugs there. Uh, she's from London, U.K. I just want to give that uh, she's given that to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Wild Zeppelin. Thank you. I'm, you know what? I might have to screenshot that. She just said, oh, my God, you're the cutest dad. Oh, thank you so much. You're so sweet. Thank you. I appreciate that. But Anne Crosby is agreeing with you. She says, so true. Take it slowly. Isn't that what you said at the beginning? Thank you, Anne, yeah. for saying that. Yeah. And that seems to be what people need to keep in mind, all of us, when we're interacting with people, whether it be for business, any relationship. Taking it slowly means we have a measure to see what's coming and what we're dealing with. But when a person doesn't want to take it slowly, then that is, now correct me, Susan, now, because you're the expert. So that's not real love if they can't take it slowly. Is that what you were telling us at the beginning? Well, um, yes, perhaps that's, that is the case. And I think you're correct. And I also think that rushing something implies an agenda. Oh, uh, okay. Fist bump, high five, five, whatever from elbow, five, whatever. Okay, that implies an agenda. Mm -hmm. Everybody, please hold on to that. Please hold on to that. <laughs> that is so. That is such good information. That is so true because they're trying to get somewhere or get something in from return you. or from you. Okay, they're right. trying to rush you. You know that? Okay, so you know the sales technique. Okay, you got to do it now because we're closing yeah, yeah, out. This yeah. offer is going to be done. So they're getting you off your pace. And, and I did a video a long time ago. Now, you guys, I'm 600, so I'm going to try and remember the title as best <laughs> as I can. But it's about new relationships and pace. And it's why new relationships fail, because sometimes the pace, they get you off your pace. There is a normal pace for opening. Not so slow that they you're frustrated yeah, you can't right, get yeah. a connection. Trying to figure but out what's going on, right? You want to try and keep your balance in the excitement of rushing toward a partner, and yes, you're going to you know be excited and want to see them, but you don't want to have it be so fast that you lose yourself because the faster it comes in, the faster it's going to go out. It just you need to do the groundwork, right? Build the foundation. Matter of fact, um, Lizzie eight oh five. It's a, I, interesting. You opened up my mind by your statement that you just made concerning an agenda. Lizzie 805 says this, wow, rushing is an agenda. What an eye opening. Thank you. That's what they just, she just told you. See, Good. I told you, you, you sew things together. Yeah, it's just off the top of my you head. Just, if you ask me what I said 20 okay. minutes from now, I don't even remember. It People will say, can you repeat that? I'm like, I don't know what I said. <laughs> it could have yeah. came, it could have came from your, from your pinky toe. It's still good. <laughs> so it, it just, if it came all the way up, it came all the way up. My that's still good. Okay. So you're prophetic. Okay. <laughs> um, I got a few more for you and then everybody, we love you, but we've got an hour and a half thereabouts and Susan's getting low on water and I don't want to talk her to death, but, but, um, let me see something else here that I want to read to you. Uh, you're getting a, a thank you, by the way, from, uh, mama, mama Riku, uh, is telling you, thank you for uh, helping with the, the show here. Uh, what does, a, what does a man mean when he breaks up with you and says, it's not you, it's me, and you deserve better. Oh, that comes from that comes from Shanti and Golden Oscar Payne. Uh, there you go. I did a video on when they say you deserve better. Okay, and I, and I'm, I haven't I haven't seen man. that one. I got to check it out. Well, oh, I've got something to say for this one. Trust me. But go ahead. I, I know go ahead. you do. Um, why don't I start with you first? You're the guy. Okay. Let's hear it from a man. Here, here we go. I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to pull this back up, and I'm going to read this. I'm going to read it to you, what she wrote. Okay? He breaks up. That's one thing with you. He breaks up. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. 
as if we were doing a recipe now. Let's just do it in reverse. He breaks up with you. He says it's not you. That's number. That's that's the second part of, of this recipe. It's a recipe. If everybody just looks at it as a recipe, don't think it's happening to you if you're a female and this happens. Look at this as if you're looking at instructions on how to do something. Okay. So one, break up with them. Two, tell them it's not you. Three, it's me. Four, you deserve better. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone takes the time, and I'm asking everyone if you could do this right now, just write out what I just said. One, he breaks up with you. Just write it out. Two, he then says, it's not you. Three, he says, it's me. Four, you deserve better. If you write that out and read it in reverse, he's telling on himself. This is what uh, this is what happens. Now remember, now remember, remember. If I read the question back to everyone, the question. I'm sorry if I've been covering Susan's face while I have the question up. The question was, what does a man mean? That's the, because you're you're looking at it from your perspective as a woman. But if you go left brain on the question, left brain on what he did, and and you take everything he says and put it in reverse, you're gonna go like, you know what? He's a he's a jerk. <laughs> so they're going like, wait a minute. He's a, he just told you, and he's extremely honest without being honest. I'm I'm not good enough for you, is what he's saying. And technically, it's really me. It's not you, and I got to get out of here. That's exactly, if you wrote all four of them down and you can go talk to 5 billion women and they will all tell you they've been told the same exact playbook because a guy thinks like that. He's, guys are that silly when they are afraid of commitment or they don't want companionship, the two C's. Mm -hmm. When they don't want those two, they must say things in reverse. It's, every guy knows it. If any guy's watching this and wants to be honest right now, they, they will tell you it, it's the truth. It's actually the truth. We will do things in reverse. It's all you ladies have to remember. <laughs> Listen, guys will do stuff in reverse. It's not what he first says out of his mouth unless he's angry. If he says it out of his mouth and he's angry, he's probably telling you the truth. But if he's just telling you, you know what, we got to stop seeing each other. You know, we, I have, we have to break up. He's telling you, I got to get out of here. That's all you have to remember. He's mm -hmm. saying, I got to quit this job. And then he starts to tell you why he's got to quit the job. And the bottom, the last thing he says is really the first thing that he really feels, which is, you're really better than me. And he just doesn't want to say it. Because if he says it, he knows from the re for the rest of his life, he will always remember every time he sees your picture, every time he sees you, man, I just wasn't good enough for her. He doesn't want to say that. His ego will not let him say that unless he loves you. If he loves you, he will tell you, no, babe, you, you just, no matter where I turn, everything about you makes me better. That's why he will say, he will say that in essence, in essence, he's telling you, you're better than me in this area or that area. And when he can say that to you, you better not let him go. You better, you better not let him go because he just, that's the most vulnerable a man can be when he's letting, forget crying. When he tells you, you make me better, oh, my God. And guys definitely over 50 are mature men that are younger, and they can say that to you. They're not lying. And you will know if they're lying because if they're arguing with you all the time, he's lying. But if he doesn't want to argue with you, he doesn't. He wants to get you your slippers. <laughs> he, wants to, he wants to get you. <laughs> There's something you got. It has nothing to do with physical. It's companionship that you're bringing to the table. If you are what Susan mentioned earlier, go work on yourself, your communication skills, different things, you know, travel, do things like that. And then you meet a man and he's sitting there going like, OK, you've been to five countries and I've I have I've just been to the, the corner store. He's going to want to be with you because you can teach him stuff. Unless he's a narcissist and toxic. I'm sorry, Susan. I did it again. I was supposed to take no, a look. No, what, what, you know, this is your show, too. I mean, you think it's a show. You're going to be gonna talking? Think that. You're going <laughs> to If I have an interview, I'll be talking. Go ahead. Um, you were going to say. No, I think it's important to hear the man's point of view. I've had people say this to me. Um, 
and and it's an honest it's a fairly honest admission of one of two things you're being a little more gracious than i would yes um, i am I, it's a family I, show <laughs> it's it's it it either means i know i'm not willing to cultivate this relationship and Absolutely. it's unfortunate because you really are a nice lady yep and you're really kind of a nice person and and you really yep. You deserve somebody who will love you. I'm not willing to do it. Yep. I'm not interested. Right. I'm not willing. I'm looking for something different. Now's not the time. I don't want to hurt you. I want you to know that I see your value, but I'm not into it. That's a polite way of doing it. That then was very diplomatic. Men, I love the way you said that. Right. And then, then there are the men who actually do, do feel very strongly for you, who may be intimidated, who are retracting sure. because like you said you know they really yeah. do realize that you're worth it and they can't imagine why you would want them that is yeah that's the whole yes that is true that why does do happen me? ladies got everything it happens your age i don't yep. have a, a, an adequate job I, you've been all over the world i have you got your you got your own place you have your own car you have, it, he doesn't see where he fits in because he doesn't see what he actually has that you appreciate how can I? How he can I be tangible a stuff. shining armor? Yes, he I needs to put. You? Yeah, put the sword down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you're and the woman's trying to tell him, put the sword down, put the armor down. I've got my own castle. I got my own drawbridge. Okay, just I just want to be with you. And he doesn't he see is, it that way because well, he's, he's been. He's got to find a place. Can our society has made him feel. Yes, yeah, his how, his role. How his place. A yes, man has to find a place. He has to, to have a role. Us. He will yeah. go crazy. He will, if it's not money related or other things, he starts to think, well, what good am I? And right. the right. the woman may go like, you're a great companion. He's going like, yeah, whatever. He goes, yeah. Yeah. No, she's going like, no, that's what I really want is a companion. So, you know, like, like we're old together, you know, whatever. And he's going like, well, okay, that's good. But what else can I do? She's going like, what you're doing right now, it just, it will go back and forth in a circular conversation because he, he has never been trained to see that a real man does three fundamental things and it's based upon what he can do. A man provides, protects, and guides. That's it. And if he's never had a father teach him that or a mentor, that's why you get guys who, who come out of different neighborhoods or whatever the case may be, a poor neighborhood, and they go get on a sports team because there are other men there that will show them you Protect, provide, and guide. And once that kid gets that, oh my goodness! And he uh, he wraps that in in what I call bacon, which is self control. Mm -hmm. He wraps some self control around those three things. Then he's locked in. It doesn't mean he won't make mistakes and he won't falter. It doesn't mean that he won't be a person who will disappoint. He will be all of those because he's human. But he will always rebound and bounce back, and he will be loyal to whoever allows him or pushes his buttons to protect, provide, and guide. That's and beautiful. that's a man that's every day a man beautiful. wakes up and a lot of women don't know it because a lot of men have not had their father around or other things. And or you can always tell when a man doesn't understand that because he's he's domineering. He does he has no need to hear a syllable come out of a woman's mouth. He doesn't what what could a woman possibly tell him? Because in his mind He's overly arrogant for a reason, because that's how I get things done. And a woman doesn't want to be with anybody like that, unless she's that way. But there you go, uh, Wild Zeppelin. <laughs> the Wild Zeppelin, that's what it is. That's a okay. great explanation. Uh, that is, I'm telling you right now, I, I didn't come up with it. My dad told me and my grandfather told him, this is how it goes. You, you only got one job. And when your woman tells you that she needs children, you go crank those up. <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> okay. you go to work, right. and she will take care of you. She will be, because the woman has an amazing opportunity to help support and cooperate. Mm -hmm. Other than that, she go do whatever she want to go do. Mm -hmm. She go do whatever she want to go do because she's always going to come back home. I mean, you know, unless she's a woman of the streets, that's different. That's a whole nother yeah. story. Yeah. That's a whole nother show. But over, other than that, the woman gets, she gets to be curious. She's multidimensional. She gets, she gets to get into whatever she wants to get into that works in harmony with what the man is trying to achieve for the family which is to build. And you get two builders together, hey, the neighborhood's in trouble. Because if that family's building and that one's building and, and everybody's working together, you got something to work with. But right now, we're living in these critical times where people essentially, what do they want a relationship for? The guy don't want to, he don't think he can learn nothing from a woman. 
and the woman doesn't think she needs a man because the man doesn't know he's supposed to pr protect, provide, and guide, not be domineering, and she doesn't have a brain. Most and of she, us just want no. to lean back. At some point, we were, yeah. we were so tired of being a man, we just, but we would need to lean back on a guy that we know yeah. has got it. It's not like, oh my God, I'm yes. going to have to tell him how to handle he, this. You know? That's becoming the common theme. Yeah. I, I, I worry for my daughters many times. I'm like, because I'm looking at guys and going like, okay, they got everything else on the appearance, but yeah. they don't finish anything. A woman wants stuff to be finished. Okay. <laughs> guys will do projects, but won't finish them. That's bad. Yeah. That's not good. That's bad relationship stuff. But a woman, look, you start here, you finish here. Watch how many women start something and go and finish it. They don't play around. A meal? You, I mean, no. If a guy wanted to eat, what if she started the meal and then all of a sudden get midstream and go like, you know, I'm really tired. I'm just gonna go sit down. He's gonna go like, hey, where's my, you know? A woman says, if you're gonna start something with me, you better finish it, unless she doesn't know what she wants, and then then you're gonna have that's a whole nother show. But overall, a man's supposed to finish stuff. He's supposed, he's supposed to because men get you know halfway through, you know, we get lost, we, and squirrel, you know, it's like it's Whoa. great. And so when when you can finish something as a man, you open the door to provide, protect, and guide. What does that mean? That means well, that you... Accountability, right? Yeah, and you value and her opinion. You. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you allow her to trust you. But if you don't have anything to bring to the table and all you do is try to flex your muscles and open your chest and do silly stuff, but all right, now I'm getting on my dad's soapbox. What you guys tell you? What'd you say? Wild Zeppelin says, oh, man, I think you just answered about me oh that's a guy oh i am i am my own provider and all that and all that and perhaps i look like to a man that he doesn't have room in my life oh susan that's what you were just talking about well i gave one boyfriend driving in the snow he wanted a category and i realized i had every one and he protested he was so great he was such a great communicator we were going to go pick up my girlfriend i'm like oh no i grew up in minnesota i know how to drive and he said susan can you just give me driving in the snow? <laughs> driving. In the snow. I'm sorry. I would have told you the same thing. Well, like, Dave. Driving okay, let me let me just tell you. You can you can build a skyscraper. You can do, just let me have this one. Just and let I, me have right. this one. And and, and when I crash, wait. Like and then I would have told you. Wait, I would have told you. Just listen. When I when I crash the car, babe, don't bring it up after. <laughs> we'll make a joke of it later on. But right now, just let me have this one and say I told you so three months later. Okay, I can't, I can't <laughs> even remember if I let but, him drive, but I remembered it. Men are like just that. Like I think I did, and I went, "Oh my god!" I realized what I'd done. I mean, this was a number of years ago, but I was like, "Oh my god!" Because he was younger, and I, I had all the categories, and I, I went, "Oh my god!" Yeah, and and it was so enlightening, and it was such a cute yeah. thing. Can you just give me driving in the snow? <laughs> like you wanted Wait. one thing, you got but, everything. But it's two ways. <laughs> it's two ways. Also, Susan, a guy could do the same to a woman. He may be so self-contained. He may have been, you know, ironing his clothes at the age of two and, you know, and building <laughs> and building Lego skyscrapers at the age of three. And now he gets a woman and goes like, well, you know, OK, I can do my own clothes. I take my stuff to the cleaners. I do, you know, I can make my own meals. And she's sitting there going like, OK, well, you don't need anybody then. He's like, no, no, I really want to have a relationship. She's like, where do I what do I do? <laughs> when we're together. This is why it's, it's you know, great if it I'm not a pet. hobbies or yeah. things to build yeah. together, some other thing, because we don't have traditional roles per se anymore, you know, and, and this way we can be a little bit more fluid in how we express ourselves and what we bring to the table. And you can have a great teammate that yeah. way. Yeah, that, it, you said it in such a beautiful way, a great teammate. I, how, do, how do we end this show? Well, we're just going to have to say goodbye to everybody. Oh, we have I, to tell them about we, next week. We, yes, we, we do. Know. Well, this is the thing about next week. I am planning something next week that I haven't even mentioned to Susan. So all we know <laughs> is, is we're going to be together and I'm building this amazing anticipation okay. because I'm doing a number of things over the next few days. And everyone, please pay attention to Susan's YouTube channel, her page, website, as well as ours here at Narc Abuse TV Network. Because hopefully by Monday, 5 p.m. California time, 8 p.m. on the East Coast. But wait, you, you, are you in Arizona now? I'll, or no? I'll, I'll be here for another week. Oh, okay, all right, I'll be here for another week. Okay, so in, in uh, mm -hmm. Eastern Standard Time, uh, you will get some more information because we're looking to do something uh, 
Um, but we just got to check a few boxes to see if uh, it can be done because I'm looking to think big. So we'll see uh, as to how big. So I, um, other than that, um, we are looking to do a show for you next Saturday, same time, same bad yeah. channel, yeah. 3 p.m., yeah. all the way, 12 and 3, same bad channel. Uh, if anybody ever even remember that show. Um, uh, there's some stuff happening on the screen. I'll get to that in just a second, everybody. Um, but Susan, tons of questions still left for you here, there. I'm going to put all of them together. Anything that we did not get to everybody, we will get to, but Susan, yes, here we go. Sounds very what serious. about, okay. what about the thing Susan promised to say in the last live? I have no idea what Susan promised in the last one. Because Neither I don't remember her Susan. promise to. I say, Susan. I I love you, Izzy, but I'm sorry. I don't. I know I promised to say what I just mentioned. The three things that that if a woman taps into on a man, she can end up keeping him for life. Um, where the, everybody's talking about men finishing stuff now. Uh, it is the truth. If you can get a man to finish projects around the house, you've probably tapped into to. Um, how can I put it? You, you massage his ability to. Provide, protect, and guide, and continue to do that. Uh, Steve Harvey talks about that in his book. This, that may be the case, um, but my dad talked about it uh, before I was born because I had brothers. So uh, all I know is before Steve Harvey talked about it, my dad talked about it, and my grandfather wow. from Arkansas. But um, what I am going to say is, Susan, you and I will get together. I see everybody. I see what you're writing, everyone, and I appreciate it. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not leaving anything out that they need. They want to say to you, okay, that's good. And Susan, I need to ask you two things that I cannot let the show go without that were sent in, okay, and I, I gave them my word uh, okay. before we we are an hour and forty four minutes, and hopefully, okay. uh, when I go to send this to uh, to Instagram, uh, they don't give me a hard time because uh, they can't tell me it's too long. Here we go. How to have Self-love and self-acceptance before or after getting discarded and leaving a relationship. How can a person have or, or develop or show that they have self-love and self-acceptance even though they were rejected? Uh, I'm kind of putting like eight different questions together in the one statement. Okay. So it helps if you had a little bit of self-esteem and self-confidence previously. Um, and then you got knocked off your center by a rough relationship where that's the dirty mirror. That's a Susanism that no matter how wonderful we are, if we're looking into somebody who's distorted and limited in themselves and they don't see our beauty and they're always critical and nasty because that's their reality, then time with that will make it will erode our confidence. Because, again, going back to the beginning of the show, it's that negative verbal input. Um, sometimes having a negative experience is a springboard for you to uh -huh. want to get it. You know, well, like you see yeah. those TV shows where the person has a breakup and they get fat and they're out of shape and then they decide to like, oh, I'm yeah. going to be, you know, then you get, yeah. you get it back. Sometimes it's just, you will have relationships that will carve things into your soul. And what we want to do is utilize every bit of information we get in this life to be aware and attuned to it to try to extract the gold in the garbage what was it you need mm -hmm. to learn why this person why did you intersect with them what's the takeaway mm -hmm. do you need to love yourself more did they come to teach you a very hard lesson let's learn it so we don't have to repeat it right got if it. they didn't love you then you've got to dig down and say you know if they didn't think you were worthy you've got to spend time then like okay this is my challenge they have just illuminated me where a weak spot is and i am going to get on this i'm gonna look in the mirror and say you know what i'm okay we did that last time right i'm fabulous yeah. yes, i'm we fabulous did. yeah we yeah. did that like yeah. i asked my mother once how she got my father <laughs> so oh actually, my god I, no i think i said how the hell did you get a man like my father and i meant it he was I... amazing no, would... there was a long history there. Okay. So, and she said, she snapped her head back and she said to me, I wasn't the best, but I wasn't the worst. And I thought, damn. There wow. You go. Yep. Pat That's one way to look at that. Going on. She said, wow. I wasn't the best, 
but I wasn't the worst. She worked it. She, she knew how to make sure she it. stood out, and she oh, kept him. Honey, she worked it. She was phenomenal. Yeah. So that's where you get it from, being phenomenal. I no was I strive or my struggle organic. to be her no my struggle is to be her complete opposite. If you see any yeah. confidence at all, it's over. The overriding intention is to express and give and get all of this out of me, this stuff that I've been thinking about and accruing my whole life right. and hopefully yeah. have it be helpful. It's yeah. more, when you get more about the task, you kind of forget about yourself. You really do. Yeah. That's, the that's thing. true. No, that's true. That is absolutely correct. Uh, do, you find your, do you find yourself going down that path that you're talking and then you may catch yourself and you're not necessarily talking the task or the question anymore, but you're sharing your heartfelt life experience in a way that it helps other people. I hope. I mean, I yeah, use you my do. own reference points because, so, you know, I know them pretty well because yes. I've lived them, yeah. right? Um, right? Other times I did tell stories about people, but, you know, yeah. I mean, listen, yeah. self-love is a long process. I mean, there are people that grew up in homes and mommy and daddy are fabulous and they love them and their environment was loving and they just come out of the box like, I'm wonderful. I know they exist. I had some wonderful experiences and some horrific experiences. So I know both ends of the spectrum and have tried to yeah. bounce my way towards someplace in the middle. You know, mm -hmm. it's been a life, it's, what is the Oscar Wilde thing? It's like a lifelong journey, right? You know, yeah. it, it is mm -hmm. one of the great love love affairs. And I think we erroneously think that self-love and confidence is the bluster that we see. And and it's not. I, I bought it, I, you know, I call this my Minnesota thing, growing up in the Midwest. But when somebody would say, I do something, or I, I'm this or I'm that, I just... I just assume they're telling me the truth. I'm like, oh, oh, you're yeah. famous. Oh, right. you're rich. I understand. Oh, you're successful. Yeah. I mean, so terrible. Yeah. But I'm that naive. Yeah. But I just thought, if, yeah. why would they I say it if it's not true, right? Yeah, right. That's so what I would then, think. Yeah. And I, I recently had an involvement with this woman that came uh, with a friend. And it was like, I'm rich. And I'm this. And I'm that. And I'm all this. And I, I was feeling so horribly uncomfortable. And then I went, oh, wow. It's not my discomfort. It's her discomfort. You know, if it's you her, have to. Yeah. So I think of, I think we are all in a process of figuring out what that is for us. Not bluster, that's not confidence, yeah. not ego, yeah. not super humility to the point where we never toot our own horn or know our worth, but someplace in the middle. And we're all on that journey, right? You, you continue to make me smile when I hear you speak because for me, my imagination is constantly going. It's as if I see your words uh, as thread and yeah. and you just, like a needle, you just carry them through. Every, you speak literally in that way. Just try it. Watch watch this back or anything you do. And, and I literally can move my hand like that when you're speaking. And that's what made me think of SEW. You're oh, literally beautiful. sowing, you're sowing seeds of information and experience into people who don't have that information or experience. Well, they don't and you, tell us you, you're amazing. Life. Have you noticed? No. You're born, <laughs> no, no, they no, kind no. of throw you in here, you're crying, uh, you got a family, uh, maybe you, can, you didn't pick them. Uh, you didn't pick uh, your circumstances, uh, you didn't pick your color, your nationality, where you're gonna live, nothing. And then they tell you, uh, hey, go for it. You're like, go make it work, go make, make it work. work. Hey, and maybe you're given a set of instructions, religious yeah. or family, and half of it you don't <laughs> agree with, probably, but you don't know that you shouldn't. I mean, it's just, but if for us to find ourselves in this is an enormous journey. And we got to cut ourselves some slack. It's not like we got a handbook, but the, the, the good news is we all have it in here. We do. So when we start to kind of trust ourselves, and I love that because somebody in the beginning talked about trusting themselves. And I think it was the guy with the most, that really eloquent speech Right. Mm -hmm. When we start to trust ourselves, we will realize that nature has encoded the truth within us. You will know it because there's no resistance. You hear the words and it feels right. You'll hear somebody speak and you know the difference between intellectual understanding and they mm. lived it. Right. You'll know. Yeah. And, and if you have no resistance when you hear something, it could mean that it's a truth for you. 
And so go examine that. But self-love, oh, hell, I'm, I'm aging. <laughs> I mean, you know, I like the way I look 20 okay, years now, be, ago. Be, Love be the nice. way I look 20 be, years ago. Yeah? Be, be nice. Be ni no, as, as you say, be nice to yourself now and be nice. Be nice to all of us now that that are able to have uh, AARP cards. Yes. So I'm just so I'm just gonna another Hershey's kiss moment. <laughs> where I look at myself. <laughs> Hershey's another, kiss moment. Oh you know, my. Okay. My life where I look at myself and White say, chocolate. "This is my reality. How can I be the best version that I am given this situation?" Yeah. 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 That's true. That, hey, the, that alone, those words are able to be sewn on someone's heart. Ladies, if you're looking in a mirror and you look at yourself and think that you look like a Hershey's kiss uh, <laughs> with your shape, or you think that uh, it's some other shape and it's not what you expected or let alone wondered where it came from, just remember the words that she just highlighted to you now, Susan, my dear friend, you said it in such a beautiful way. And I'm not going to tell you what those words are because you need to watch the whole show back over again. <laughs> <laughs> and so you'll get it. But I need everyone to go to Susan's YouTube channel. Oh, Listen, everybody, subscribe. Okay. It does you. it's not gonna it's not gonna kill you to subscribe. But more importantly, somebody said it earlier. I'm just not gonna sc scroll back to it. They said that from your YouTube channel, you've helped them to be able to cope, grow, and learn. Uh, so many people watch these shows on Narc Abuse TV network yeah. and they are from foster homes. Children of divorce, children of, of alcoholics, and a number of yes. things uh, that they have written me and yeah. uh, talked to them, and and they appreciate the shows because they've never had someone in their corner to explain certain aspects of life. Yeah. One thing is for sure: no matter what you go through, you can find someone on this channel to be able to talk to. But when it comes to relationships, uh, you don't have to feel like you're left in the dark. Uh, Susan will always be able to be accessible to you. You may not agree with everything that I may say or Susan may say, but one thing is for sure, you're going to agree with this. You're not out there on your own. You can find some source of encouragement to help you make it through. Somebody made gravity, and we never have to worry about it falling short, and we can stay stable. You can, you can be sure that Susan will help you stay stable. Oh, you just have to sweet. tell her the whole story. Don't don't break up the story and leave stuff out, okay? Be <laughs> honest and transparent. And don't try to get an answer to so she can make you feel good. Tell her the truth, and she will help you grow when you watch her videos and her show. You're getting so much love on the screen. Oh, that's uh, as I, well. you know, my Susan's amazing. Oh, I audio book. I did okay. some hearts, and, and then I never okay. see anything after that. So. Okay, I'm going to ask you, do you have an audio book as well? Cause somebody's mentioning I, this. I do, Break screen. Up Triage. Okay. I, did, All right. I, I, I do. It's only 33 minutes. It's free on Audible. Okay. It's like $2 or something on Amazon. Okay. But if you're going through oh. the first part of a heartache, oh, my God, and the breakup, it's fabulous. Okay. Yeah, it's on the screen here. Somebody's highlighting uh, to make okay. sure to highlight. Susan is the best. Abby's uh, doing that. Thank you, Abby, again, for being here. Uh, Jessica says, you look stunning, Susan. Just want to throw that out to you. Thank Jessica you. Uh, Nord you. Nordwin, uh, thank you both so much for being so generous with your time. Uh, I just want to tell you uh, the best, the best thirty minutes uh, she was able to enjoy uh, from the uh, from eighty eight k. I'm just going to keep calling you that, um, Susan. Uh, everyone wants to know a little something about you. That's what I got. I'm just going to. This is the last thing. Okay. People, people were asking me what different things that that love. Wait, these are people that follow you and watch you and so forth. They just never got a chance to actually talk to you. And so now I'm calling the show quits. We're going to talk next week, everybody. So let's do this. I'm going to ask you this before we go. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I got so much knowledge from this and a heart. That's from Lizzie805. Uh, Susan is so special. Thank you, Susan. I want to throw all of those in real quick before I say this to you. Uh, I, never, <laughs> I, never go to, I never go to Susan Wonder YouTube channel and want to turn off a video like I do any other channel. They, in other words, they want to just keep watching it. They Thank binge you. watch you, essentially, is what they're saying. Just I want guess to tell you that. Okay. Out of that. So, so, wonderful. so, so uh, no, that is, hey, they just put you on play. And, hey, look, if you're doing that, I, I know a lot of people do that with, with uh, our small show. But if you go to Susan, just put the headphones in, guys. You know, and if you're not watching the video, just put the headphones on and uh, go ahead and do your workout. Just, you know, do your gardening or whatever. Uh, okay, here we go. Question. You get to know you a little bit better. Here we go. Susan. There are moments that you've had in your life 
where you looked at yourself in a mirror and you said, oh, my goodness, I look really, really good. Okay. Or I'll just use the ghetto term. I look hot. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you looked in a mirror and you said that. Mm -hmm. If you had to say over the past three years, how many times did that happen to you? <laughs> Never saw it coming. Oh, she never saw it coming, God. you guys. No, 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 I no, got no. her. I don't have a, I, I wish I could say, oh, I did it hundreds of times. I love myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, you will never hear this question anywhere else on any other show, ABC, BBC, any other show that she goes all over the world, this woman goes and talks to people. I'm the only one that asked her that question. In I, three years, how many times did you look at I, your... Oh, it was three years. Okay. In the past okay. 36 months. In okay, 36 well, months, how many times did you look at yourself overall? I'm, I'm buying you time by keep throwing the question out there. Um, so how many times did you look at yourself and went like, man? I, I, I've rarely done that in my whole life. I've just got to be honest with you. Oh. I, 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 I'm so sorry. I don't mean to break any. I, I, like, I, I just, but there are times that I look and like, I hate getting dressed. Anybody that knows me knows this. And then my girlfriends take me shopping and force me into clothes in the 21st century. So, I, I mean, I wear like sheath dresses and like pumps and stuff like that. It's very 20th century business. So they put me in the 21st century. Um, I haven't done that because I don't think like that. But I do know that there are certain times that I, I look at the whole thing and I go, okay, that's not bad. So I think okay. that, that's what I say. Like this, this works. Okay, this will okay. work. All right. So now, did, did I every, disappoint you? I'm every you no, no, no. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Not, okay. I, I'm. I don't disappointed. Not not with you for sure. But no. I just want to say this to everyone that has just heard her say that. I want you to right now type in each one of you that can do it as quickly as you can before we unplug this sucker here at uh, one one hour and fifty nine minutes. And I hope YouTube or rather Instagram will allow me to post this. Listen, type in that you think that she's beautiful right now. Oh. <laughs> Type it in right now. Just have at it. Just come on. Just Even if you put the letter B in and with a heart, put the letter B in a heart if you think she's beautiful right now. Okay? Everybody just do that for me. Oh, here we go. Susan. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. I just don't think you like guys that. are I don't awesome. Think I ever did. No, you don't have to. They're doing, they're doing it for you right oh. now. This will make up for this. Oh, good. It took a big jump. Look at that. So <laughs> this is really cool. Okay, so right now, oh, my goodness. Listen, my friend, they are letting you know that you don't have to look in the mirror. The world sees that you're beautiful. They're, they're seeing this. And, and they they're are seeing, letting you know. know. I mean? Yeah, well, they're Susan. Seeing, the intention, they, I think, and they, that's what's so fabulous. They they totally forget. Listen, it's, my screen is jumping. Okay, yeah, it's here and then it jumps. Here and then it jumps. Everybody, do me a huge favor because I get to save the shows. I'm going to be able to put this together and send it to Susan because Susan, you are beautiful. As oh, Anne Crosby, Anne, wait, Anne Crosby. I'm I'm reading what she says. Susan, you are beautiful inside and out, and she's that, giving you six like. six hearts. Uh, Hillary says yes. Uh, red carpet, uh, essentially, is what uh, uh, Miriam says. Uh, Abby says beautiful. Hillary says beautiful inside and out as well. Of course, uh, Tim from Roots of Empathy. She's magnificent. Yep, she's beautiful, according to Lizzie805. She is beyond beautiful, according to Amat. And uh, others here, you're beautiful, Susan. Uh, so many hearts. Susan, you are gorgeous. Susan looks stunning inside and out. If you can. Everyone, please remember, next week we're going to be back. I want to tell you you're beautiful and jump on this beautiful appreciation train towards oh, you, thank you because you have essentially had an open session discussion with everyone and did not charge us a penny. So I just want you, I want you to know I am honored that you give up your, your time to be here, but they're still going, by the way. They're still typing. Oh, so I just want you to know. Uh, she's oh, be she's great. a beauty and a healer, is what Hillary oh. says about you. So thank you, my friend. Thank I appreciate you. everyone and all the thank hearts you, going everyone. across the screen. I just wanted you to know that you were appreciated beyond thank what you. others may appreciate you. We appreciate you so much here at Narc Abuse TV. And uh, I learned so much from you each time. Thank you no, Paxton, for today. No, Paxton, you're so comfortable. You're I'm just, so comfortable oh, you're with kidding. you. Now, that's your gift. I'm appreciate super it. comfortable with you. Thank and you very much. It makes it fun. And then we have yes, lovely yes. people. 
you know. Oh. So I mean, the whole experience is wonderful. What What are we gonna do next week? Everybody has to come and find out because I do have some things that I will it's not tell Susan big. about. But we're gonna we're gonna yes, it's we want to go big, big. We want to have some fun. So everybody, next week, look forward to seeing you. Uh, right now, Susan, enjoy the rest of your evening there Thank on the you, East everyone. Coast. Thank we'll see you. you. Thank you, Thank my you, friend. All you lovely people. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Great Thank job, you. everybody. See you soon. Bye bye.